Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a peanut butter jar mock-up that you can showcase your label and packaging designs on. It's the perfect mock-up to impress your clients with and look stunning in your portfolio. If you don't have time to follow this tutorial, you're in a time crunch and you just need the design, I got you. I do offer this mock-up on my Creative Market for download, I'll post the link below. And if you're stuck on a project and you're just not sure where to go next, I do offer one on one virtual coaching sessions where we'll take 30 minutes to go through your problem and come up with a solution to get you unstuck and back designing. All right, that's enough for me. Let's get started with the tutorial. All right, designers, I'm in a new window in Illustrator and have a new file open with an artboard. I also have my layers that I've prepared over here called uh, reference where I've placed my reference image and locked it so I don't accidentally move things around. And then I have my design layer and I've already put my label design here um, that I'm going to mock up onto my peanut butter jar. So to create the 3D shapes, I'm gonna create OBJ files. And to do that, I'm going to start by turning on my rulers and grabbing my rectangle tool. And I'm gonna draw a box around the peanut butter jar just to find that center point and drag a ruler to that center point. And then you can delete the rectangle. I think I'm just gonna use my pen tool to then trace the outline of the peanut butter jar. So starting at the bottom, I'm gonna keep the base of it flat because this is a little warped with the angle that it's at. So I'm gonna to come to right about this point and then start to trace the outline of this peanut butter jar. And I want to make sure that I'm getting all the little bumps and imperfections right because that's what makes this look more realistic. If it was exactly perfect, that wouldn't be how we see things in real life, right? So I'm tracing the outline and I'll flip to the outline instead of a fill so we can get a better idea of where we sit with this outline. And then I'm going to curve the points here so that they look a little closer to the example. And then at the bottom here, I'm also gonna curve it and then having to imagine what the bottom of a peanut butter jar looks like. I know that it indents just a little bit. So I'm using the anchor points to then bring that base in and um, it kind of ends in a little point, right? So I'm gonna make sure that that is reflected. You never know if you're gonna see the bottom of your container. So it helps to think of every angle you might want to show in your mock-up. Okay, and then I will just increase the stroke because this is pretty thin plastic. Um, so I think that just increasing the stroke is gonna be good. If you wanted to show the inside of the jar without the lid, I would add some ridges here, but I know that I am just always gonna keep the lid on. So I will skip that step, but I have shown that in other videos. Basically you just draw some extra lumps and it gives the illusion of a twisted cap um, inset. And then I'm going to select this path, go to object, path, and offset path. And this is so I can create that inside layer of the peanut butter because the outside object is going to be the plastic and then the inside will be the peanut butter. So I'm just going to choose maybe 0 0.03. Yeah, just something that offsets it just slightly so that it doesn't overlap with our material, but still gives us that shape. Okay, and then I'm going to delete the outside stroke because we don't need that. And then I will come to our shape here. We don't need this anchor point, but we do need to move this to the center point. And then we need to come back up to the top. And I left one of the anchor points from the shape intentionally so that I could drag it to the center because we will need to come to the center line and complete the shape. So when I flip to the outline, it is solid because we will create this solid shape of peanut butter fill inside. Next, I'm going to create the lid. So since there's a lip and I want that to be represented, I'm going to follow the same process that I did for the base. So I'm gonna start by drawing the outline 
And there's that little bit of a lip right here. And I can come in to this point right there, giving it a little bit of a gap and then completing the shape. And um, you can't see in this angle, but I'm also just going to imagine that there's a lip on this as well. So adding two new anchor points and then I'm going to drag them down ever so slightly to create this little lip that I know exists on the peanut butter jar. Again, if you wanted to match it exactly, I would recommend getting um, different angles of your reference image, but I know what a jar of peanut butter looks like. I love peanut butter, so I am familiar with all of the grooves and the shapes, and I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to me. Um, and then there's that little circle in the middle, right? That little piece of plastic. So I just want that to be ever so subtle. So I am just reshaping that to have that slight imperfection that adds that realism. And then I'm going to curve the edges because again, if it's too squared off, it just doesn't look real. And you can also curve the inside, but we won't really see that too much. Just adding a slight little curves and touches to each of these sides. And then you can see there are ridges around the edge so that it's easier to open. And the way that I'm gonna achieve that is by grabbing my circle tool. You can grab it over here on the left or just hit um, M and L on your keyboard. And I'm going to draw it to the width of that lid. I will have to make some tweaks later on once I'm in dimension, but we will just see how that goes when we get there. So I'm gonna open my stroke panel and I'm gonna choose dashed line. And if I make the weight a little bit thicker, you can start to see what our options are. Without measuring exactly, I kind of want them to be equidistant. So if I have a six point gap and a three point dash, that is giving what I want it to give. And then as far as the height goes, we'll be able to adjust this in dimension, but just to get it close, I'm going to measure from the top of this to the bottom here, and it's giving me a height of 1.12 inches. So when I come to the 3D materials panel and click on extrude, I will do 1.12 inches for the depth, and that will get us pretty close to what we'll need in dimension. So I'll put that to the side and then continue creating my other shapes. For the lid, I'm clicking on Revolve. So for the circle, I'm clicking on Revolve and you can see it's got that little dimple in the, in the middle and then it has that ledge around the edge, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm going to maybe just separate the peanut butter from the jar for a minute so that we can see what we're working with as it expands. So there we have the peanut butter after clicking on revolve and the same thing with the jar, clicking on revolve to create those pieces. Now I want to save all of these out. So highlighting all of these 3D shapes, I'm gonna right click, go to collect for export and as multiple assets. You'll see in the asset export panel that those shapes appear and I'm just gonna rename them. And then from the drop down menu, I'm clicking on OBJ as my file type, and I'm making sure that all of those are highlighted. And then I will click on export. And then also while I'm an illustrator, I want to export my graphics that I'm going to apply. So I'll do the same process, right click, um, click for export as single asset with everything highlighted. And I will save this one out as a PNG. All right, now it's time to open up Dimension and I'm gonna create a new file. Don't forget to save your Illustrator file while you're at it. All right, my first step is to make my background white. And then I just wanna get my canvas all situated before I start placing in my images. So first I'll start with the jar and then clicking move to ground to move it to the ground. Same with the peanut butter. And I have to rename things because my biggest complaint still to this day is that these OBJ files don't come in with the names that I gave them, but it's fine. We just drag and drop. We rename. The ridges came through, so that's a win. Um, and then just getting everything in place. 
And then once I have everything selected on the left, there's our align panel where I will center and center and then moving it to ground just so I can see where things are. So the jar and the peanut butter can stay on the ground, but I'm sliding the lid up to where we want it to be. And then just selecting the ridges, moving those to the top so that it sits really nicely. And I'm just gonna group everything together for a minute. As I move around getting a higher view, that's when I can see the size of the ridges. They're just a little bit too distinct. So I will come to this group and click on transform. And then here where it says the size, I'm gonna just go down ever so slightly. And then grabbing all of those elements, let's try realigning and tweaking our shape. Yeah, and that fits just a little bit better. I like how the placement looks. Let us view it from the front angle. Yeah, I think it's looking really stunning. Um, I'm gonna add a camera view at this point so that I can save the different angles that I like. So my first camera angle is gonna be front and I'm gonna expand my canvas large so that I can have a nice high quality rendering. Um, and then I'll probably add another one called angle. Next, we're going to add our materials. So highlighting the jar, I'm going to type in the starter assets plastic. And I'm going to look for a clear plastic and drag that over top of the jar. And then here we can start to see there's a little bit of a misalignment between the peanut butter and the jar. So I'm going to start by sliding up the peanut butter layer and then for the peanut butter so for the peanut butter layer i'm going to choose rough damaged cellular concrete i'm going to repeat that rough damaged cellular right there if i turn on ray tracing it's going to show me how that's looking in the jar and i'm going to come down to the materials and i'm going to change the concrete color to something that's like a little more peanut buttery um, I just grabbed this hex code from an image and I think that looks really convincing. I'm loving that. The other thing that I will change is the lid color. And since I want the lid and the ridges to be the same thing, I'm going to group that and rename that lid, dragging matte the material over that folder. It'll apply it to the whole thing. And then I can go back to my Illustrator file, grab my navy blue color, and I can open up the lid under materials, scroll down, base color, and I will paste in my navy and save that for later just in case I need it. And then I'll also adjust some of the lighting. I like a three point light. If you've been watching my videos, I always drag three point light over because I think it just adds a really nice dimension to the shape. And then I'll come to ground and I turn down my shadow opacity to about 50% just so it's not so intense. And then from there, sorry, my bubble's like blocking the window. Okay, and turn down the overall environment light because the highlights will be kind of blown out at a high, high intensity. And then once you have the lighting how you like, then you can start adding your graphics. So I'm just dragging in my label as I had prepared, and I'm going to actually turn off ray tracing because it's slowing some things down. But then I will place that label right in the center. And I'm gonna turn the roughness to one because I like a matte label, but if you wanted it to be glossy, then you would choose zero or somewhere in between. And then when we turn on our preview again, we can see that the label is on there. And then from there, you can start mixing and matching. You could have three different peanut butter jars with three different labels. You can start moving things around, hovering, floating, having some with the lid off, having some with the lid on. The options are really up to you for how to customize your layout and your composition. Um, there are background images. If you wanted it to look like it's in a kitchen, if you wanted it to look more realistic, you can kind of just drag in textures, patterns, whatever you're looking to showcase. But then when you're ready to render, come over to this render tab in the top left, 
choose your settings, um, medium, high. Sometimes I just start at medium just to make sure I like it without going into a full long render. And then you can choose your camera angles here that you want to export and then click on render. And here's the final look. All right, designers, that wraps up this tutorial. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and leave a comment below with what you'd like to see next. Until next time.